How people get hacked today is typically one of two ways. They either open some kind of an attachment like this, which came in as an invoice from Microsoft, but then it says you need the password to open. And because it's like an email attachment, you might be tempted to type something in here and hit continue. But of course, the trick here is the continue button because you might think, well, this is just a file. But when you click on the continue button, it has a link which is going to send this data to the site cyber criminals. Now, even though it's quite public that I'm a cybersecurity person, my email gets perforated by phishing attempts trying to get my credentials. Another major menace is info stealers. If we go to Malware Bazaar, we can see it's filled with submissions of different types of stealers. So the two popular ones, Redline Stealer and Luma Stealer, these are files that, again, you're going to get via email. And if you run any of these, they will simply collect your or authentication tokens directly from your computer where you're logged in and then they can use that to hack into your account. And of course, it's not just email. Like I constantly get messages on Twitter, every social media platform. And the trick with these bots is they send out thousands of these messages. It's all automated, so it doesn't waste their time. And then the people who respond get the personalized attention and then they try to tailor the malware to their specific victim. And this is how how even in larger companies, a lot of people gain access. The initial point is typically an employee giving their VPN credentials or getting infected with remote access tool, which is another major category of malware. So the classic rat. And once it's installed on the system is when they deploy other threats like ransomware. So again, for those of you who think, well, if I don't install random new programs on the internet or, you know, and, and go and just like like download random EXEs as if that's a thing. Today, most people are not infected because they're browsing the internet and they accidentally click on an EXE file. That was more a thing several years ago. Now most people get infected where the malware comes to them. They don't have to go out on the internet and find it. The malware's in their inbox, the malware's in their private messages, or it comes from a trusted source or a website that's already hacked, or it's inside a program that they use whose company got hacked, like in the case of 3CX. Not to say that there still aren't things like, you know, malware advertising, malvertising, where you've got ads on Google. Another major source of malware now, funnily enough, is like all the social media platforms, YouTube videos. If you look for any kind of cheat or crack or mod in a lot of cases, you're going to quickly find a lot of videos where you have external links. And a lot of these links, especially if they're password protected, are going to be malware. Sometimes it's literally the first search result. Like, look at this. We have what claims to be a City Skylines 2. And it's also a mod menu. And then you have an archive with a password. And of course, the archive size is like 80 megabytes to evade the scanners. Ah, we're having a, you know, click adventure now. I wasn't expecting this. I was thinking it's going to be an info stealer malware. But before that even, we've got a different malware pop up now, which seems to be installing some kind of malicious add-on adware to our browser. So that's great. <laughs> so this thing claims to be a smart ad blocker, but the thing itself got installed via an ad. Okay, so maybe getting malware by visiting random websites is still a thing. But if we go back and uh, actually try to look at our download and use our password, you can see we have an 18 megabyte file here, and this is actually the info stealer. Of course, they pretend to have a bunch of other files. They just pack a bunch of garbage in here so it looks legitimate. If you scan something like this in Vars Total, especially when it's new, it will not be detected by a lot of engines. And so far, this one is only detected by like 12 engines out of 66. So a lot of these info stealers, they're not going to be detected by static analysis. They might be detected if you have good behavioral protection on your system, but that is what people neglect because they don't think they need it. And when you run something like this, it is going to quickly grab your cookies and send it to the attackers. And this kind of stuff is all over the internet, sometimes with channels that have been hacked that have a lot of subscribers. But the type of attack can go from something as silly as this to something really sophisticated and very difficult to spot, even as an experienced user. One of the largest attack vectors today is email. So here you can see what appears to be an email 
email from BBC about their latest documentary on artificial intelligence. And if you check the address that it's coming from, it is culture at bbc.com. So it appears like this has been sent from the official BBC email. The email itself looks fairly legit, so it has their logo, it is structured properly, no typos, and it has a nice link to access this preview. But if we go ahead and click on this link, Oh no, it says our system is hacked. Looks like a classic ransomware screen. So how on earth is this possible? Didn't the email come from the official BBC website? Is all of BBC hacked and their emails are now run by cyber criminals? And the answer is no. There is actually a way for attackers to spoof the email address so it looks like it's coming from a domain that it's not. Now, of course, this particular system hack screen is not really malware, it's just a joke. But technically, this could be any website. It could be a drive-by download. It could be a phishing website that looks like BBC. It could be an info stealer. Now, something like this happened quite recently in real life with one of my friends who works at a chip manufacturing company. So they had internal email asking them to re-authenticate their Microsoft accounts. And if we hover over it, as you can see, this is a confusing link, but it actually redirects to a phishing page. And if they put in their company credentials there, well, the attackers could gain access to critical infrastructure. Now, I can't show you the whole email because of privacy reasons. I obviously don't want to disclose their company emails and stuff like that. But this is a very real attack vector and people are getting hit by it. This is especially potent for employees of a company like in this case, if you're in the middle of your 10 hour workday and you get one of these emails and you're just instinctively gonna click on it and do what it asks you to do. Now, I may be wary if I get an email unsolicited from bbc.com with a link, but that's not typically who the attacker is going to target. They're going to target people inside the company where it may be common practice for them to send early access videos for review. And the hackers are gonna do the research to know that and send the email in the exact same format with the exact same kind of link so that when the employee sees this, they're not going to think, they're just going to click on link instantly. And then you have this. And by the time they realize something's wrong, it's already too late. Now, this particular attack vector can be mitigated by DMARC compliance. And one of the easy ways to get it is with easydmark.com, who is the sponsor of today's video. You can even go to their homepage and just have fun by checking popular websites, see if they're vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. I'm actually surprised CNN gets a 10 out of 10. Damn. BBC really is the worst. All right, I gotta try this one. Oh. <laughs> so you'll be surprised to find a lot of major websites can be spoofed. So I expect phishing is gonna be a major attack factor, especially for infiltrating companies, because it's so easy if you can get a legit looking email into the inbox of like a low to mid tier employee, they're just not gonna know what hit them. And they're probably gonna be too scared even to report it. They're just gonna pretend nothing happened. And then those credentials end up in the hands of the attackers and the security team doesn't find out until there's a breach. And once you sign in, create an account, it's a very simple setup process, but once you go through it, they're going to make sure your email records are protected so that attackers can't spoof it and they can't send emails like this on your behalf. You can easily manage multiple domains. They even have additional features like reputation monitoring to see if you're getting blacklisted and you will be alerted if something goes wrong with one of your websites. And it's a really simple onboarding process. So if you're managing the security of a company where phishing is a major threat, I definitely consider checking out Easy DMARC. You can do so using the link in description. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found this information helpful. Please like and share it if you did. Thank you all so much for watching. We recently went past 500,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate all of you subscribing. Thank you all so much again. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.